Yeah, yeah, one, two, one, two. You know how we do with your boy BQ with your Impact Wrestling review here at the Impact Lounge, the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. So if it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. This is very likely going to be the last, well, what's today? The 26th that I'm recording this. So yeah, it's going to be the last episode of the year. Um, As far as the next episode, they're doing the, the best of and year review and awards. I've made it very clear I don't care about any of that. And it's not an impact thing. I just don't care about it, whether it's, you know, when I watched WWE, I didn't care when they did it. I didn't care about the Slammies. I don't care about AEW does it. I just don't care for those types of episodes. So if I'm doing you a disservice as a impact podcaster and not covering it, um, my bad. That's all I'm going to say to you because I, I just don't have any interest. So we're going to use that as an opportunity to take a break and then uh, come back in 2000 and. 23 um we did go myself and tw the last time we got together we did go over some of the awards and who we thought were going to win but um it is not anything against impact as i said it's against all companies i don't care i don't care about any of that stuff so um if you guys do more power to you there's some other podcast um brace for impact um um Total, uh, total nonstop impact. The TNI guys. There's, there's guys who are going to cover this stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, so I just, you know, recommend that you check out their shows and um, don't expect anything from me. All right, just keeping it real with you guys, keeping it 100. So we're going to talk some impact wrestling. Uh, there's a little bit of news. Uh, the first thing, first and foremost, Rich Swan resigns with the company. So I'm really excited about this because he is one of my top three favorite wrestlers with uh, Moose and Steve Macklin. They're the three guys that I just, I'm most emotionally invested in when I'm watching this company. And there was a, other some other guys I was invested in, Rohit Raju, you know, being number one, that when guys like that leave or they're asked to leave or, or whatever the case may be, it hurts my fandom a little bit because those are some of the guys that I really enjoy watching. So Swan is my dude. I love Rich Swan. Um, can't put on a bad match to save his life. You know what I mean? So I'm really excited that he's sticking around. And uh, I was listening to the podcast with Chris. Uh, what the hell's his name? Van Vliet. I'm trying to think that so there's the basketball player, Fred Van Vliet. So I get the uh, the names confused. I don't know if they're whatever it is. I listen to that dude <laughs> every blue moon. But um, he, Rich Swan did break it on his podcast. And, you know, he, he mentioned that his kid is like over a year old. I think they have a son. I think it was a little boy. And I'm like, wow, we haven't seen Sue Young on TV in forever now. You know what I mean? We're talking like a good year and a half. I don't know if she'll ever return or not. Maybe she's never coming back to wrestling. But if she did, um, I would love to see her back. She's one of my favorite characters on the show, favorite wrestlers in the company. So I would love to see her return one day. You know, um, I hope they do it the right way. You know, if they if they were going to more of a surprise, you know, not like they would do with Sammy Callahan where they, they tease unnecessarily teased it. Cause it would have been so much better if he just showed up. But anyway, yeah, rich Swan returns and there's, there's been a few re-signings and signings and uh, you know, people say, Oh, what, you know, what, what great news for impact. And it is, it is good news. Um, I think only a couple of those, maybe rich Swan, maybe Ace Austin are, are probably, bigger money signings. You know, some of these other ones are just very small money signings. But with that being said, at least we're getting a little more consistency on the show because what I, what do I always say that they have a business model where they like to cycle guys in and out and it works for them, but the fans don't like it. So now at least we're going to get a little more consistency at the top and bottom with, with ACE coming back. Uh, uh, who'd I, who'd I just say? Oh, um, uh, yeah, Swan, and um, who, am I, who am I thinking of? Chris Bay, that's the one I was thinking of, too. Obviously, Jonathan Gresham coming in. So we're going to have some consistent names on the show, and I think that's going to be really good for 2023. Uh, on, a, on a more somber note, uh, it was announced a couple days ago, uh, Stefan Bonner passed away um, of MMA fame. If you guys remember... I think it was maybe 2017 that he was a part of Bound for Glory as a tag team partner with Moose. And it was, it was one of those angles we kind of forget about because the, that was one of their worst shows in forever. That's when they had a bunch of, it, it was a nightmare with Jeff Jarrett coming in and out and 
the card was all over the place and that was one of their worst shows that they ever did so it's never been a pay-per-view that we, like, we revisited fans just forget it even happened you know um but he was one of the uh you know participants of that against uh with moose against lashley and um uh, king mo and it was one of the matches i think people were more interested in at the time you know that's back when moose was doing the baby face stuff but you know uh definitely uh rest easy and um if you guys haven't seen that match might as well go back and, and check it out on everyone's favorite app impact plus what else we got uh anthem trademarked the name santino morella and a lot of people were really excited about this i don't know if they were so much excited as they were there was a lot of talk there was a lot of chatter about it they obtained the rights of the trademark santino morella um, anthony corelli's name when he was in wwe and he has done a little work with impact but i think the last time we heard from him he said he didn't really have interest in an on-screen role they try to bring him on i had always been hoping they were going to get uh you know we're going to be able to sign his daughter uh but she's with with nxt but she's she's very talented i was really hoping they were going to bring her on at one point i'm surprised she didn't do a tryout or anything like that when i say a tryout i mean like uh just wasn't on tv at all for them and uh we'll see what this means if I, if I have to be uh, negative here a little bit and live up to the moniker, there's so little buzz right now going on with the company and so little excitement that this is news, you know? I just don't find something like this that fascinating. It doesn't mean I'm not curious, like, what is it for? You know? I'd like him as a serious character, but are they trying to bring him on to an, you know, bring him in with an on-screen role? of trying to recapture some of that magic, you know, I, I don't know. So I, I guess we'll see what, um, if it turns into anything, it might, it might be nothing, you know, there might be, a who, who knows it might be in, it may have, it may not have anything to do with anything we see on screen. You know, we, we just don't know, but, um, it kind of, it kind of hammers the point home a little bit where I say, you know, when there's not news, create your own news, find a way to create your own news. Because then st stuff like this becomes like news where people are like excited. And this is not exciting shit. You know what I mean? There's um, there's a responsibility the company has from a marketing standpoint where, you know, Tony Khan is great at this. He's probably a little, probably goes overboard a little too much, but he makes sure people are talking about AEW daily. He, he's going to drop something on that ass daily to get people talking when there's no news. Triple H did the same shit with, with NXT, you know, it is a strategy that no matter how big or how small your company is, you got to find a way to have people talking on a regular basis and impacts done a much better job with it. You know, cause back when I first started reviewing the show, it was like TNA Thursdays uh, on pop TV. And that was it. You know, there was no, there was nothing going on on social media and no news, no nothing. You know, uh, the negative news, TNA news would come around and that would just that would take six out of the seven days away from impact. You know, just people talking about negative shit. So fortunately, we're far past those days. There's not a whole lot of negativity around in the company. There's nothing you can like LOL TNA about. And that's probably one of the biggest accomplishments that Scott and his team have achieved so far. Um, since taking over. So let's, uh, let's get into impact. Let's get into the actual show itself. I'm, I, I should, of course I missed before the impact. I didn't know Kylan King was on this against Taylor Wilde. I am going to look this match up. I have interest in it because I want to see Taylor Wilde's new character and Kylan King. If you haven't seen her, she's really good. I'm just flabbergasted. AEW didn't bring her in full time. I really am. Um, this is someone that she's doing NWA work right now, too. If you really want to uh, add someone to the knockouts division who has a lot of TV experience at this point and has a unique look and uh, just a lot of talent, you know, someone who can challenge Jordan Grace one day and challenge some of these some of these girls who are 
really making a name for themselves in the knockout division. Like this is someone you want to bring in. Um, there, there's a little bit of star power to her. So I, I would love them to bring her in. And she has a pretty decent finisher too, which I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get into it at some point during the show. Impact's finishers. You guys know how I feel about them. But um, I have a lot of interest in, in checking that out. So the show kicks off. And it's the world, the knockout world tag team champions of Death Dolls. And this is a, uh, they're doing a free bird rule here. So it's Jessica and Rosemary. And they're taking on Deanna Prazo and Giselle Shaw. So they kind of created this match last week, this little angle. Um, we get the match the next week, the very next match, basically. It, it kicks off the show. And then it's over. Um, I talked a little bit about this last week with these knockouts tag team championships like the only program out there that's that exists that's worth a damn for these belts right now is to get some kind of match against the hex allison k and marty bell that's the that's the only thing you can do that is um exciting at this point because it's just a bunch of makeshift teams and it works you know but it doesn't work when you rush the matches when you when you build it up one week and we get the the match the, the next week it doesn't work when you when you defend the titles at every single Impact Plus show. You know, because what I say after Overdrive, like you don't have to defend every single title at every single show. You know, like you can headline the show with the X Division Championship or something and like give the other belts a break, you know, and, and these are belts. These are belts that kind of need a break because there's such a lack of competition out there. So usually. What we see when we have matches like this and they're extremely rushed, there's a reason for it. I remember going on a rant when Havoc and Nevaeh broke up. And uh, they teased it for the longest time, the dissension. And then they break up and they have a match immediately. And it's on before the impact. And I remember just losing my mind over this. Like, why do you refu refuse to build things and make us wait for the match. Why do we get it so fast? I, and I understand we're in this instant gratification era, but I remember being so upset about it. And then we learned that she was released from the company and that's why they rushed the match. Um, and sometimes when we see people drop titles very quickly or just se seemingly out of the blue, it usually has to do with someone departing the company. And I don't believe... I. <sighs> I've heard really like conflicting stuff on this. Some people are saying, well, Deanna's contract is up or was up in October. Some people mm -hmm. said she signed an extension and she's around to the end of 2023. But we also know that impact more often than not releases people out of their deals when they want out. So this came off to me like Deanna's done. I hope I'm wrong because, you know, I truly think she is the best. Um, and I don't want her to go, but my kind of gut instinct kind of tells me that, um, that she's out of here, but the match was a pretty decent match to start off the show. You know, these are teams I care about. So I was interested. I was interested in the match. I just wanted to wait for it a little bit, uh, so that I could, you know, anticipate it when it, when it showed up, but that's obviously not what happened. The death dolls have a, have a couple of finishers that I, Okay, so I'm already getting into my finisher rant. They just don't look like they hurt. Um, this one includes the spear. You guys know how I feel about the spear and multiple people using the spear. And I've never really felt like women should use the spear in general. So it, it, it's almost like when this happened at the end, I didn't even I thought Giselle was gonna kick out, to be honest with you, because it just it just doesn't look like it should beat anybody. But they did win, and um, I guess we'll see what's next. It's they have to find something meaningful to do because Taya is the other one in this team that or in this company that people are just expecting to 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 leave next. That's the one they're like, well, she's going to go back to WWE. She's going to, you know, the same thing happened with Chelsea Green and some of these people where they they go over there and they never really got their opportunity. And that's going to rest. That's going to sit in the back of their heads. Like, what could I have done with the opportunity? Like, it's one thing if you go there. And you're like, yo, this isn't for me. You return to a smaller company where you're comfortable. But she didn't get that chance. She didn't get that opportunity. So I'm, I feel like she's 
she is one of the next ones. I think she's prob- probably likes what she's doing right now. She's involved in a pretty good angle and team, and they just created something. I don't think she would just up and leave right now. But it feels like her time is coming. So what if that happens? Do the Death Dolls continue as, you know, these Decay girls? Or do they drop the belts? Like, there's some challenging times ahead for the Knockouts tag team division. There there really is. There's some un- unanswered questions, but there's some cha- challenging times ahead, folks. Uh, this uh, Jay Vidal that they have with, with Giselle Shaw, I mean... Is there not a more perfect compliment to a wrestler like Giselle, Giselle Shaw out there? Um, I really like what what they got going on. You know, I think it can be better than uh, the Caleb and Caleb with a K and and uh, Tennille Dashwood stuff. I think it can be a little better than that. Uh, there's there's a lot of natural chemistry between these two. I'm I'm sure they've known each other for years. I just feel like they probably have. There's a lot of a lot of chemistry. So, um. There's some Mickey James and, and Jordan Grace backstage shit. They're doing the can two opponents coexist bullshit that they do before every single pay-per-view. And I mean, what company doesn't do this? Uh, it, it, it's something that we just seen over the years. It's real tired. It's real played out. But at least this one, this story made a little bit of sense. You know, where Tasha was like, you know, you said he re- re- you had to beat all the knockouts, which he didn't beat all the knockouts. We've talked about this. He wrestled like half the roster. Uh, but you said he re- had to beat everybody. And Jordan says ne- negative. I don't want you wrestling her because she has to make it the hard to kill. And that kind of piss- pisses Mickey James off. Like there's a little story behind it. So I'm not saying it's like this cut and paste deal, but uh, the the overall like can they coexist thing is just it's just old. But um, you know, Mickey says I I need to win this match. You know I. And, you know, we'll get to the finish of the match a little bit later. Uh, I don't know why I just talk like that. Um, this so after it shows a very quick. Running with Giselle Shaw and Deanna Perrazzo and for seven seconds of television, this was really bad. This this looked, I mean, community theater. They got, they got, they, they just got to get rid of the community theater stuff because there, there are some backstage segments that, ha, that are a little more real, like the Mickey and, and Mickey and Jordan thing I just talked about, where it's just it's it's a little more real, it's a little more emotion involved, and then there's just this fake shit. Um, and I would just love to see them get away from that. <laughs> I, I really would. Another interesting segment here, I don't know of another, but an interesting segment was Sammy Callahan. He came to the ring. And he's calling out the design. Excuse me, I want to take a drink of coffee. And that's good. Um, calls out the design. And the design comes out. There's a very mixed reaction on the design right now. What I see from people in the in the Facebook group, the Impact Lounge Engagement group on Facebook, is that they don't feel Diener is ready to be a leader. I actually really disagree. I thought his... Uh, his mic work was really good here. I mentioned this last week. I'm probably going to say it like 50 times going forward. I think he walks a little too slow to the ring just because it makes the other two behind him look extremely awkward because they're not in any kind of character. So they're just walking extremely slow. It looks weird. Anyway, calls out Sammy Callahan. And uh, I guess Sammy Callahan's contract is almost up. I'm like, Sammy Callahan is not going anywhere. I don't think he is. Um, And I really don't want to sound negative. I talked about last week about some wrestlers and some being in shape, some being out of shape. He's not, he does not look like he is uh, testing the free agent waters. He looks like he's, he's pretty comfortable where he's at. And he's also committed to the company and, and trying to help it grow and, and do good things. And there's always Sammy's one of those people. There's a lot of programs out there for him. Like he can pretty much work with anybody on the card. Uh, he doesn't wrestle a whole lot, even when he's healthy. So it makes him a little more special. You know, there, there's a couple couple people on the car that they just get matches every blue moon. And, uh, you know, he could do a, a angle with Josh Alexander. He could, um, they could revisit something with Rich Swan, you know, which was one of the best, um, probably the best matches they've done in the last several years. Um, man, there, there's a lot of people. I, I mean, I, I know I just named off two, but, 
you can pretty much go up and down the roster and like you can find something for Sammy to do. He's pretty versatile. And then you can always find a way to revisit him and Eddie Edwards. You know, there was before his injury, they were actually going to team up and that was going to be kind of interesting. So I don't know. Maybe he's the guy that uh, because he's got to recruit someone. We know he's not joining the freaking design. Maybe he recruits Eddie Edwards. Um, maybe it's it's the the Chris Dave uh, Jay Chris. Sorry about that, guys. You know we'll see, but at least with this, the angle was different. It wasn't like um, the design saying join the design, and then he gives in, and then we know he's going to turn on him. Like he he went to them, you know. So that that was a little bit different. I had interest in this. It was just different. Sammy wasn't saying the same shit he always says, you know. He's kind of one of those guys comes comes out of the program. I mean, the uh, the promo he cuts is no different than the last one. So this is really different from them. You know, Angel's got a chance to talk a little bit too. Uh, and I, I'm very concerned they're going to make him the job or the group, which I, I I really, really hope is not the case. But then they take out Sammy Callahan at the end of this. And, you know, the, the announce team is saying, you know, the, the, the design, you don't ask to join the design. They ask you to join them or whatever the hell they said. So I've got some interest in this folks. Um, I've never, I, I was never too interested in many violent by design angles. There, there was a couple, but I I'm just so much more interested in, in, in these guys and what they do. It's, it's fresh. And it's even like the violent by design music. I didn't like, I mean, there, there was just so much about them. I didn't really care for. So you know, it'll be interesting to see what Joe Doring comes back. If he comes back, I don't know if he's going to be, uh, once he gets healthy, I don't know if he's going to wrestle anymore. You know, um, it would be interesting to see if, if he joined up. So then the, then the show, this was overall a pretty good show. Let me put this out. I didn't say that from the beginning. I enjoyed it a lot more than the episode last week. This was a little easier to consume. That being said, this is when it slowed down for me. Um, Yuya Yurmur versus Mike Bailey. And I know you're saying, why? what do you mean it slowed down? This was the best match on the show. It was. But it was a wrestling match. That's been one of the things I've been talking about a lot over the last several months. Wrestling matches. Um, the Ring of Honor shit. You know what I mean? Like, just have a good wrestling match between two guys who can't talk. Um... <laughs> you know, I don't know if you, 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 Murray is really long for the company. I don't, I don't know if he's going to be around for a bit, but I mean, I can't imagine him in any kind of storylines and, and they have a pretty hard time doing storylines with Mike Bailey. Like Kenny King is carrying that story, whatever the hell they're doing, which is a very slow moving storyline, by the way, which is, which is okay. But, um, this was a good match. I, I'm just I'm kind of over the like good wrestling this year. Like I really just want to see some good good stories and and everything. You know, usually Impact you set have a very good balance of it. Now it seems like it's one or the other. It's like either good wrestling or there's a story. You know, I just like to see uh, a little more balance. And then after the match, uh, they do a little Kenny King video. It's Mike Bailey. Um, has a fake shock look on his face. It's just a lot of work to do with him, you know, and, and I guess having him wrestle good matches is, is the way to, you know, to move him along because that's what connects that, you know, let's be honest. That is what connects with the crowd is the wrestling. But um, I just want to see, I just want to see more from a storyline standpoint. I, I just do. That's just me. doesn't mean you have to to feel the same way. And there was a backstage segment with the uh, Motor City Machine Guns. They were in Scott Demore's office and the major players and Heath and Rhino were there. And we're getting that tag team shit show match, multi-team. I didn't mean tag team. I meant pay-per-view shit show multi-team match that they like to do to get as many people as possible on the card. And it's going to be Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, at least it's an elimination match, which I actually kind of, I, I prefer elimination matches as matches when they're when they're four ways. I think the uh, it's just more sensical the way the the matches are laid out. But it's Motor City Machine Guns defending against some major players: Heath and Rhino, Austin and Chris Bay. Now let's let's keep it real. This match is to set up the Motor City Machine Guns and Bullet Club. That's all this is. 
that is going to be the feud going forward after this. Heath and Rhino, it's just a gut instinct. I know nothing. I think they're done after this. The major players, I think, are done after this. Major players, to me, is a major missed opportunity. They really could have been the most exciting part of the show. And as I said last week, he's, you know, Cardona is more Zack Ryder than he is Matt Cardona on impact. And I think that's, I think that's a mistake personally, but I have a little bit of interest because I like the major players so much, but that is my personal opinion on this, that this is, you know, write a couple dudes out of the company and then uh, move on with Motor City Machine Guns and Austin and Chris Bay. Then the show starts getting interesting again for me. John Schuyler and Jason Hotch, they're supposed to be in a tag team match versus Johnny Swinger and Zicky Dice. The match doesn't happen, of course. Bully Ray comes down, and he takes out Skyler and Hotch. And I, I said this on Twitter, and I, I like to, and I have to admit when I'm wrong so people can take me seriously. I got very upset when I said, why is Jason Hotch wrestling Trey Miguel? Why is John Skyler wrestling Bully Ray? If these guys are heels, why are they wrestling heels? Why is a heel versus heel match? Why are they randomly trying to make us feel something, some kind of, uh, you know, sympathy for Skylar and Hotch? And then this happened. And I, and, 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 and I started thinking that when this happened too, and a minute, the minute the match got interrupted, I'm like, oh, here we, here we go. Like, what are they doing with these guys? Because they're two dudes that I think have something. And then I kind of got the feeling I knew what was going to happen because Ray Wall gave it away. Announcers like to do this sometimes where in their attempt to throw you off the scent, they will just not let something go. It's kind of like uh, when someone botches a move in the ring. We don't see that in Impact too much, thank God. But AEW, we just see it a lot. A little bit of a WWE too. Someone botches a move, and instead of just treating it like, "Hey, it's life," people slip sometimes. The announcers will just beat it to death for the next like forty-five seconds. Oh, he must have been dizzy. I mean, Taz, you ever wrestle when you're dizzy? Oh yeah, yeah. I was dizzy once, you know. And it just continue and continue, and you lose the the. Uh, you just it, you lose, and the natural feeling to the match, the natural flow. And when when Bully Ray came out and Matt Ray was like, why why these guys, you know, two irrelevant characters on the show. Let's be real up to this point, completely irrelevant. But Ray Wall just kept what? Why? Why? What is he got against these guys? What? What against the he's giving it away that something is going to happen. But Josh comes out, you know, after Bully Ray lays these guys out, Josh comes out to save them. He zip ties Skyler, I believe, to the ring. I don't remember which one it was. He, he zip tied. And then they attack Josh Alexander. And I was like, this is freaking genius. So I have to admit when I'm wrong, because I'm sitting here accusing them of some shit booking. And I've accused them of some shit booking ever since Bully Ray won this call your shot gauntlet. And every week they prove me wrong a little bit more because this has been a really interesting story and I didn't want Josh's next feud to be, let's go have a good wrestling match, you know? So this was just genius, man. And I don't know if they're forming a faction going forward because they didn't, they didn't really appear to be simpatico. Like they, they, they didn't leave together. Bully Ray didn't really acknowledge them. So we don't know if he like hired them, if it's a faction. I don't know. If it's a faction, I think that means Bully Ray wins this thing. Because that's kind of what they do with, with guys who are world champions. Sometimes I like to give them a little faction. I, I'm talking about heels. Sometimes they have a lackey. Um, there would just be no point, point in these guys joining him if he was just going to lose. And then just move on to an angle with someone else. I think whatever is going on with Steve Macklin is to throw us off the scent a little bit of what they want to ultimately do. So we'll talk about Steve Macklin here in a little bit. 
but I I did think this was genius. They took a couple guys who were you know jobbers, but had some potential. Put them in a role to be sympathetic figures a little bit. Even kind of put them in a little bit of a comedy comedy role last week. Even this 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 episode when they came out and we're gonna do the mega power handshake or whatever they were trying to do. It completely threw us off the set. And if Ray Wall wasn't, you know, beating to death, oh, what, what's he got against these guys? Uh, they, you know, they're just out here to have a match, you know. Because how many times do matches get interrupted and the commentators don't care about who got kicked out of the match, you know? So I got to say, I'm I'm really looking forward to this hard-to-kill match. Um, they, You know, they lay him out. Tommy Dreamer comes out, and Tommy Dreamer gets laid out. You guys know how much I love when Tommy Dreamer's a part of an angle, but but it works. So we're going to see. What if this is a stable where Tommy Dreamer's involved too? What is, what is the two old dudes, two new dudes, you know? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Let me take this opportunity. I should have said this at the top of the show if you're listening to this on streaming platforms. I mentioned last week that this is, I was 99% only podcasting on YouTube going forward. And that's probably what, how it's going to be. I don't expect to be on streaming platforms going forward. That's my choice. Uh, if you want to check out, you know, myself, check out the cool factor when we have the time to get that going again. YouTube is the place to be. I don't want you to sub- unsubscribe from those platforms because uh, hopefully I can return to those. But just to be totally transparent, my house is not a not a large house. When I moved to, here to Illinois, it was just basically me and my two boys. But then my daughter decided to move in. Um, then my fiance, my eventual fiance, uh, moved in. Her daughter moved in as well. So I have a larger, uh, larger household size than I do house. <laughs> Let's put it like that. And um, the area that I had specifically set up here in my office for podcasts and all that, it's, I don't have, um, I don't have that same exclusivity. I can never say that word to this room. My younger kids use it. Sometimes the cats destroy it. It has not become a room of comfort for me (laughs) where I'm, you know, when I first moved in, I just had my setup. My setup was always in place. And it was easy for me to just sit down and do content. And now every time I sit down, my computer's on the floor, my microphone's knocked over, my microphone case is ripped off, things are unplugged, and it's very frustrating. And it's hard to stay motivated when that's your workspace. So summer 2023, we're moving to Nevada. It'll be my final move. I will not move again. This was, uh, I was planning on making Illinois home when we moved from Florida several years ago, but now we're going to be moving out West to be closer to family. So, um, I will have a house much bigger than this one. I can assure you, (laughs) I will have some dedicated space. And maybe when I have that dedicated space again, come summer of 2023, I'll be able to sit down and knock out content so much quicker, so much easier, um, because I, I, I'll have a dedicated space and, uh, you know, one that people aren't getting into or animals aren't getting into, you know. But um, with all that being said, because I haven't had the consistency of the podcast and we haven't had a consistency of the cool factor, it is just my decision to remain YouTube exclusive. So don't subs- don't unsubscribe. <laughs> don't unsubscribe from those platforms because the goal is to return But at least for half of 2023, you will not be getting content on there. All right. So let's move right along and finish up talking about this episode. Then we get Steve Macklin versus Rich Swan, two of my favorite three wrestlers in this company. I didn't have a good feeling about this match, though, because I didn't know what kind of finish there was going to be. And there was a count out. And last time it was a disqualification. And there was two disqualifications. I think we had three disqualifications over the course of four matches. We're really using the DQs and count outs and these finishes <laughs> to their, you know, to their advantage right now. So 
the thing was he he controlled the majority of the match and they were able to to create some really good heat after the match between swan and um and macklin it wasn't like macklin just laid him out and left him for dead you know or he didn't like completely squash him he did control the match but then it ended in chaos and it was it was natural it felt natural so it made me want to see what is next but this whole angle of steve macklin being angry because he's not getting a world title shot i mean what have i said before i could i could get a world title shot in that company i could i could walk in and challenge a dude and get a title shot so it, this is just it's just stupid because you have a fighting champion it's not like you have a champion ducking ducking everybody like this guy says no to nobody so how come steve macklin doesn't have a title match or why can't Steve Macklin be like, okay, I got the next shot because there's obviously an opponent at hard to kill. And there was obviously an opponent at overdrive and, you know, but I wonder if, if the Steve Macklin stuff is to throw us off the scent of what's really going to happen. Because usually when they do something like this, it's telegraphing, Hey, champion is going to win because he's going to have another match against this guy. And then they already, already tease, you know, Rich Swan wanted a shot at him too. Now, maybe this is just going to turn into Josh and a three-way feud with Swan and Macklin. That is very likely. The way Impact does shit, very, very likely that that's where they're going for. I shouldn't say likely. It's just possible. It's very possible that's what they're trying to do. Or is it to throw us off the scent because Bully Ray is going to win this thing? I really don't know how this is going to play out. I don't know who's going to walk away champion, you know? But whatever it is, they're putting a lot of effort into this story. It's intricate, intricate. It has moving parts. They're putting a lot of effort into it. So is it just going to end with a one, two, three? You know, Josh approached uh, Scott Demore at one point and said he wanted it to be a full metal mayhem. So that's... That's essentially like a table, ladders, and chairs match. It's just that the belt is not held up by uh, where you have to climb the ladder. But ladders, tables, and chairs are legal. And there was some storytelling there, too, because he used the, the chairs um, initially, right, with with uh, Jay Chung and, and that whole thing that happened. I don't remember if anything happened with tables at any point. I don't. I wouldn't be shocked if we if I looked back and there was something that that involved tables because there always is when it comes to him. But 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 the effort they put into this just makes me feel very foolish in how I was very quick to judge them when Bully Ray won this thing, and I was saying, "Yo, Bully Ray's not going to bring a single extra eye," and he's 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 not. But the goal still is to put on the best possible wrestling products possible. That I'm sorry, that was like a double to put together the best wrestling product possible that is the goal and they're doing that with with hard to kill this this hard to kill card is pretty good i'm i'm actually looking forward to this i'm i'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it it was going to be full metal mayhem and it makes sense because you can't have a wrestling match of bully ray and josh alexander because the styles are too different so sometimes you can use these weapons to to offset it and i, I always have very good um memories of full metal mayhem like the hardy brothers and the um eddie and alicia versus um uh angelina love and davy like i have good memories of full metal mayhem so i don't look at it like a street fight or those bullshit matches no you know that they like to do i have good memories so this does not uh you know make me any less excited for the match we get a um Backstage segment with Eddie Edwards and Alicia. And this was a little bit better than some of the stuff they've been doing in the past. But wrestling is so funny because they make it act like married couples do not speak at home. And that they only talk when they show up for television. And that's also silly. But I thought they did an okay job with this. I, I got the vibe this time around, though, that Alicia's going to help him win. Like... I feel the heel turn coming with her because she sound, sounded more supportive when she was like, you have to win. Like she's telling him, you have to beat him for us to move on. So she's going to ensure he wins. 
You feel me? So that's where I really think this is going. I think she's going to um, she's going to turn with Eddie finally, which she really needed to do a long time ago, but she didn't. This is the time to do it. Um, so I hope that's um, I hope that's what they do. Uh, you know, they mentioned on social media that before the bell is returning in January. I don't know what the hell before the bell is. I'm I, I sat here trying to think like. When the hell did they do something, a digital show called Before the Bell? And then I kind of looked into it, and it's just, they're just previewing matches, in-depth previews. Like, who gives a shit? Um, at least it's content. At least it's digital content. But you have to be careful sometimes of just promoting to the people who are already going to watch, you know? I think something like this is supposed to be designed for people who, who are on the fence or don't really watch. But are they promoting it in a manner where, <clears throat> excuse me, those people are going to see it? You know, if you're just like, hey, it's on D- Impact Plus and you're I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. And maybe I'm being contradictive because I'm always telling them to do additional content and do stuff that's going to bring in new eyeballs. But I guess when it's just the cookie cutter preview, I just don't know who gets excited about that, you know. So I don't know. As I said, I don't remember what it is like I, I don't have a clue what before the bell is so you know maybe it's maybe it's something something worth a damn I, I, I don't really don't know i just i just don't remember to be honest with you but i'm sure you guys will let me know um then we get the main event here which is jordan grace and mickey james versus tasha Steeles and savannah evans as i said at the top of the show the whole can they coexist thing is really tired it's really played out but this is a little different because the story was, okay, Mickey, we're going to let you wrestle Tasha Steels, but we can't jeopardize you not going to hard to kill. So the match was pretty good, and it it helped that they built, they built Savannah Evans a little bit better over the last few weeks to where we took her a little more seriously. Like, hey, she actually could pin one of these girls, potentially. You know, we, we knew who was going to win the match, but usually Savannah never beat anybody. So it was, you know, it just made it more interesting. Um, the match ended. Jordan Grace, you know, gets the win, uses the muscle buster, which wasn't the Grace driver, thank God. The muscle buster, I think, is a really dangerous move. If you guys remember in WWE, Samoa Joe pretty much ended Tyson Kidd's career with that move. And... That kind of marked the end of my WWE days because, believe it or not, Tyson Kidd was my favorite wrestler at the time in that company. Um, I and I know you pe- people probably don't believe me when I say that, but back when I was really interested in the NXT product, he was the main roster guy over there, uh, doing main event angles and stuff like that, uh, improving his character. And I just was like, "Yo, I love this dude." I uh, really, I really got into Tyson Kidd as a fan, and then after that, he just became he was just became my favorite favorite wrestler flat out for for quite some time. So I have issues with that move, and I think it's a dangerous move. But it's whatever. What do I know? I don't wrestle. I don't deliver the move. I haven't taken the move. So what the hell do I know? I just don't like the move. But anyway, uh, they win, and then of course Mickey James is upset because Jordan won the match, and Mickey had told her I need to be the one to do this. So, you know, this is an interesting story. They've done they've done a decent job. I think some people think they've done a phenomenal job. I wouldn't say that, but they've done a pretty decent job with this story. But I got to pose this to you guys, this question. Do you really think this is the end of Mickey James? Like, most people expect Mickey James to lose here. So Jordan puts her over. But do you really think that's the direction they're going? Because Mickey James' potential last match would be promoted i mean hard twitter facebook whatever the hell they would be doing um media they would just be doing uh, i i i mean the story would dominate the show but the, but it's not it, it would main event the, the pay-per-view which it's not going to because I was hoping it was going to, but because it's table let or excuse me, uh, full metal mayhem, it's probably going to go on last. 
because the ring's probably going to get messed up or so, you know some something's going to happen in that match so i don't think they could just put it back together and have a knockouts match you you can't have a knockouts match after uh, a full metal mayhem that just wouldn't make sense <clears throat> so um i think mickey james is going to win this thing i think she's going to win the belt she may even do it in a heel fashion but i do think she's going to win because if it was mickey james potential really really her potential last match or her actual last match i should say they would be promoting the shit out of this like trying to get all these people to watch who haven't been watching impact and who stepped away and who don't want to give it a chance and wwe fans because they've already teased that mickey james is going to be in the royal rumble again so um what happened last time they put the belt on her right she had, she had the knockouts championship. So I think she's going to win it again. Uh, I, I think she is going to beat Jordan. Because then what do you do with Jordan after this? I mean, you you're, there's a lot of mileage out of this feud with Jordan and Mickey, Mickey, Mickey James. Like you could run it for the next like half year in one way, shape or form. So I think Mickey is going to win. I mean, like, do you guys agree with that? I mean, do you think that they are pushing this match so hard that the wrestling world is aware that this legend, this beloved legend, could be wrestling her last match? I, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. Especially with such a big angle with Bully Ray and Josh. Like, if the wrestling, the rest of the pay per view were like kind of a decent pay per view, and this match was the absolute focus and the headliner then yeah, it probably is Mickey James last match, but I don't see Mickey going down like this. I think she's going to um, win the belt. And, you know, the person who ends her career will also be winning the belt. And that will be what ultimately puts someone over, you know, because what do you do with Jordan after this? If she ends Mickey James career, still the champion. Like what challenge is out there for her? You feel me? So that's what I think. I think, um, Mickey James is is winning this thing. I think think she's leaving the champion. That's the impact thing to do is to give her the belt, go to the Royal Rumble. You know, they got a pretty decent bump in initial viewership uh, the next episode after that. So I think they're going to try to (laughs) follow that formula. So we'll see if that's what they do or not. But that's it. That is uh, it for me, guys. I'm your boy, BQ. Enjoy talking impact with you again. A pretty good, pretty decent episode. Uh, If you want to check me out, Going forward, it will be done so here on the YouTube. Thanks for listening, guys. I am out. Peace.